I am not a victim. I am a victor. I am not unable anymore. I can do all things through Messiah who strengthens me. So that, that's why a lot of times we go to we go on missions and around the world when you, you're doing we see so much of the power of the book of Acts happening. Because you're walking in the Great Commission, that's the center of his will. And that the anointing just comes on. And the same with you. It doesn't matter what you don't have to be across the world. Start sharing the gospel now. That's the Great Commission. That's the will of God. People get saved. Start doing that. The anointing will follow you. Sometimes you'll be saying things and say, How do I say that? You say these things and say, I like that. I, how did I come up with that? I didn't. You'll be anointed. The more you get into the will of God, get about the things of God. Get about the purpose of God. Get about the Great Commission. The anointing will come. Yes. Now listen to this verse. And you shall bring him, verse 8, you shall bring his sons and put tunics on them. The word for told says bring is the word karav. Try it. Karav. karav. Karav means to bring, but it means to bring near. It means near, to, bring, to, become, to walk near, enter near to God. It means, anyway, see, ministry is linked here to getting near to God. You can only minister as much as you draw near to God. Amen. The power, the more you minister, the more you have to draw near. If you're ministering, you're ministering, and you haven't been drawing near to God, what's going to happen? You're going to burn out. But the thing is, if you go in the presence of God, that's where the power comes from for ministry. Yeah, even, the book, even the book of Acts, Pentecost, they were in the presence of God, and the power came. And they went out, touched the world. But it started with the presence of God. You want to do great things for God? That means all the more you got to draw greatly, draw more near into the presence of God. You want to, you want to produce great fruit? Your fruitfulness is going to be linked to your rootfulness. The more fruit you want to bear, the more you have to be rooted. Your fruit will not exceed your roots. It might look like that for a while, but it's going to end. But your fruits are going to be linked directly to your roots. So you got to get deep. Moses did great. So what did he, look at what he did. He did so much amazing things, and yet he was in the presence of God. Paul, look at a man of action, man of all. He was in the presence of God. David, man of action, warrior. He was in the presence of God. You want to fulfill your ministry, you got to get into the presence of God every day. Karav. And the word karav also means joined, joined. What was the name of the tribe that ministered to God? What does Levi mean? Joined, joined. Remember? The, remember Leah said, said, now I will be joined to my husband. But it was really a deeper thing, joined to God. They're the ones who are joined to God. They join people to God. They're joined. So the, your, the key of your ministry is your joining to God. And the key is, the power is, take, if there's anything that's not joined to God, join it to God. Now you might think, anything not to God, I don't deal with it. No. The, the, the thing, your sin, well, I, I, that keeps me away from it. No. Join it to God. He'll take it away. Join it to God. Whatever's in your life that especially is not joined to God, you that shame, that old thing, whatever, join it to God. Everything in my life, I want everything in my life to be joined to Him. And I want him to be joined, everything about him to be joined to my Lord. I want to take the word into my life. I want to take your spirit into my life. I want to take your love. I want to apply everything into my life. Apply it. I want to bring this home with two last keys. Number one, when I was a kid in Hebrew school, I was in the synagogue choir. And during a service, I'd walk backstage, and there they'd have all the, all the robes, all these blue flowing robes. And when I put that on, I was, I was hot in the Lord. I meant, I meant, I was something, I thought. I was like I had a new identity. I could sing like an angel. At least that's what I thought. But the garment was like, wow. You see, the garment is about identity. They could perform the ministry of God because they were given the identity of God. You cannot, see, we tend to operate this way. It's like, it's me. I know who I am. I mean, I know who I've been my whole life. It's me. And now I'm saved, and now I'm trying to fulfill God's purposes. But that's not it. The secret's in the garment. Your calling is of the new. You cannot fulfill the calling in your old identity. You cannot, you say, hey, uh, you know, I'm basically, you know, I'll, I, know the, I know the doctrine, but I kind of feel like a loser. You're not going to fulfill your calling that way. 
I, I'm, I'm, I'm not godly, I'm not this, I'm this, I'm this, I'm this. Then you're not going to fill your calling that way because the old identity cannot fulfill the new calling. Putting on the garments is about the change of identity. Before, before Abram could fulfill the purpose, he had to get a new identity, a new name. You're now Abraham. And by, by believing that, I'm the father of the many, that's why he left Ur, that's why he left Haran, that's why he went to the promised land. If he didn't believe it, he'd never fulfill it. The same way Moses had to believe in God he was going to be new or he'd never fulfill it. So with Elijah, so with Isaiah, all that. Peter had to believe, I am now a rock. Even though he didn't, if he went by his record, it didn't match up. It doesn't have to match up. You don't go by your record, you go by God's word. You go by the name, the new identity. That's what the Bible says. You know, when the Bible speaks in Ephesians about putting on the new and putting off the old, you know, one of those words has to do with clothes. It's like, but I'm going to put on the new. I don't make the new. I don't, I, don't, I don't produce the new me. It's already made in the image of God. I put it on. And that's the thing. I have to accept that even though my record doesn't say it, even though I don't go by my, my, my surrounding, I don't go by my history, I go by the garment. I go by the identity that God's given me. And so in God, I can say, I am not unholy. My new identity, I am holy in God. I don't care what I've seen or not seen. In God, I am holy now. I am not cursed by any, any past curse. I am blessed in God. I am not a victim. I am a victor. I am not unable anymore. I can do all things through Messiah who strengthens me. Put on the new identity and that is what's going to fulfill the calling that God gave you. And last thing. The garment was already made. They were only given to the priests when the garments were finished. The priest didn't have to sew anything. So your calling is already done. It's already finished. It's already complete. You don't have to do anything to make it. You don't have to produce it. You just have to receive it, put it on, and go with it. The garment of the priests were skillfully woven. You know that scripture? I know the plans I have for you. You know the word for plan in Hebrew, mahashabah, means woven intricately. And that's here, it's the same thing. It says the garment was skillfully woven. God has already woven together your calling. He's prepared, it says he prepared our good works for us to enter into them. All you will ever do in God, all you will ever do is already done in God. He already has it for you. You just have to walk into it. Every challenge you have is already won. Every setback is already redeemed. Every problem is already solved in God. Every race is already finished, run. Everything, the holy, pure, righteous, victorious you is already there in God. You just have to receive it. I'm wearing it. I'm putting it on. I don't deserve it, but I'm wearing it. This is going to be me now. You are God's priest. You've been called with a high and holy calling. Don't let anything tell you otherwise. It is so great that it's time to let it have its way. Let it, instead of struggling for it, let it have its way and affect everything else in your life. Change everything that's not. It is glorious. It is finished. It is of God. And it's for you to be changed by it. And to become that person for which you were put in your mother's womb for this hour. Live accordingly, Paul said. Live in a manner worthy of this high calling. Live in a manner worthy of the high calling that you have been called by God. Put on your garment. Hi, I'm Jonathan Kahn and I hope you were blessed with the video. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and tap the bell icon so you're notified every time a new video is posted. Feel free to share your reactions with your comments and how you were blessed and share this video with your friends. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.